my husband was looking for a vehicle, like we've previously mentioned, um, so that it would put us in a better financial position. So we've landed this car, we thought, oh, sounds all right, let's investigate it. We rang the number on the ad, and it was an ad that looked very legitimate. It had a vehicle, the photo of the vehicle, it had a really nice spill on the car, and then it had a phone number. We rang the number, it was an answering machine. We thought it would leave our, our details. We rang a whole lot of other car, cars that were advertised, so we'll just see what happens. We had a text message. The text message said, sorry about the delay. If you're still interested in the vehicle, send me your email address and I'll send you some photos. So we thought, oh, well, just check it out. Might be crashed, may not have a motor. I think my husband made the joke. And we thought, oh, okay. So we then received an email we ha and it stated that um, the gentleman had had to move in, um, overseas to the UK. He had been left a vehicle from his late uncle as a gift and that he had no use for the vehicle to be transported to the UK. So that he put it in storage and um, it's now up for sale. We then questioned him on the price of the vehicle because we thought the vehicle price was quite low. And he said that unfortunately his friends had also had a giggle with him about it because the price of the vehicle was low and unfortunately he had already advertised it and he couldn't go back on the price because it was out there on the, in the papers. So he said, look, unfortunately you're just going to get a bargain. I can't do anything about it. It was left to me in a will. I didn't really know the, you know, the real value of the vehicle, so forth. Um, we thought, okay, well, before we go any further, can you give me the VIN number and the plate number? As we have normally purchased vehicles and sold vehicles, that's the first thing you ask for to do. Registration checks, see if the car's got finance, um, see if it's been any accidents or major collisions. And if there's any, um, you know, anything holding, um, any holdings on the car. And we did all of the above and it was as clean as a whistle. It's great. No problems with the vehicle. Fantastic. Rang him back and we said, oh, can you give us a copy of the registration papers? Because we actually rang our insurance broker and said, could you put insurance and cover on this vehicle? We're going to transfer some money. And he goes, can you give me the insurance, uh, the registration documents? So we asked and he goes, no, sorry, don't have them with me. Unfortunately, I've had to leave them in the glove box of the vehicle because when you receive the vehicle, you will have to sign it. I've left a proxy in the, in the glove box also to give the purchaser authorization to sign on the seller's behalf. Also sound very legitimate. So we thought, okay, well, that, that's okay. Um, and then we said, well, we're not going to transfer money straight into your account. So how do you go about it? And he goes, well, look, you need to protect your money and, we need to pro and I need to protect my car. So can we use Google Checkout? And we thought, well, okay, let me investigate Google Checkout a bit. And it was great. It said, you know, that it protects the money into a trust account, so forth and so on. And then we said, okay, well, we're happy to do that as long as the money gets held in trust by Google and then gets released once we give the okay. Well, unfortunately, he then replicated Google Checkout's website, transactions, invoice numbers, receipts, all of the above, and changed BSBs and account numbers to his own, setting up a company account over in the UK and making an international transfer to a UK bank. So then the money was transferred. We had the last correspondence from him through obviously a fake transport company uh, late Friday and we then alarm bells started running and we tried our very hardest to stop the international transfer. You've definitely purchased items over the internet before? Yes, I have purchased items over the internet before and feel quite confident on purchasing items off the internet. Yes, I did feel that the seller was legitimate. When we had a look at the original price that was advertised, we did think that we were getting a bargain. But at the same time, we thought, well, we have heard of cases that people, you know, need the money and they are financially tight or, um, you know, they need to pay the debt off because they're in a circumstance. So we thought we would investigate further into the purchase of the vehicle. And we did actually ask the seller 
why the vehicle was at this price and he made it very clear that it was left to him in the will. He advertised it before he found out the real value of the vehicle because he didn't have a driver's licence and he didn't own a car and he couldn't take the car back to the UK. So all the answers that came back from the seller made me feel confident that the price was legitimate. At what point did you suspect the deal was a scam? Unfortunately, right at the end, when we received a receipt from the online money holder that was obviously the, the fraudulent one, um, saying that they had receipted the money, then we received an email pretty much instantly from the seller saying that I should be receiving an email from the transport company within 30 minutes to say that the money has been received by the holder of funds and that the um, vehicle is now being tracked and here's a tracking number. We then received that email. It, the web page looked odd. It had little red crosses on it and it it just didn't look like everything else that we had dealt with, like everything else had a logo, um, had terms and conditions, it looked legitimate and this didn't. It had spelling errors, it was just not right. So my husband googled the transport company and right down the bottom of the, the legitimate transport company's details was please be aware that there has been scams with international transactions and my husband and I just started panicking and we went into a full-on panic. So how much money did you lose Emma? Twelve and a half thousand dollars plus We've made several phone calls internationally, lots of time trying to retrieve our money and obviously bank fees and charges trying to retrieve our, our money. We've had to pay the bank for them to try to retrieve it. What were the sort of tactics that this person used to make you make that purchase? The tactics that he used was to keep me confident, keep me at ease and make me trust him. So everything was, uh, yes, I've got an answer for that. Um, if you're not happy with using Google Checkout, I do have a further three people that are interested and that are happy to go with it. He wasn't aggressive. He, was, he, he sort of befriended me and then was able to work with me because he, I gave him some sort of trust. So they sort of get you to trust them then they have an answer for everything because there's only so many questions that you can put forward to a purchaser. And yeah, and also just putting a bit of pressure as to make a decision and make a decision quick because I need to get this transaction out of the way before you start to see that is it is fraudulent. And he continuously stated that it wasn't a scam, that everything was legitimate. It was through Google Checkout. It was in a trust account and he just kept stating it and it made me feel confident that my purchase was a legitimate purchase. So Emma, looking back and in hindsight, what would you have done differently? My husband and I have actually discussed this a lot as to what we would have done differently. Would we have researched more? Would we have looked upon our emails more? Would we have made more phone calls? But to be honest with you, we couldn't have. Mm. We did registration checks. We did speak to our broker. We emailed, we, phone, we had phone calls, we really felt that we did everything we could. The only thing that I feel I would have done differently now would be to put more pressure on my bank to help me get that money back. And knowing what I know now, I could have actually done that. But I don't feel that the bank helped me as much as they could have. It was just another transaction and it was late Friday and I feel that that's how they dealt with it. Looking back now, it is so traumatic to know that I've put my family under financial pressure. 